Good morning. Good morning. It is, uh, it's uh, good to be with you as we gather in God's house to worship. Uh, I want to draw your attention to some of our announcements in the bulletin. Last Sunday, uh, we had our joint worship service over at the fire hall with Trinity and had decided that the uh, loose offering would go to the fire company for paying down the debt on the tanker truck, and uh, we had collected $440, so just wanted to share that with you. This morning, we're going to be taking up loose change for our joyful noise offering, and that goes to our emergency heating fund. Also, after uh, worship this morning, uh, we'd like to ask people to stay behind and to help set up uh, tables and chairs for the salad bar. Uh, if you are looking at the chair carts, some of the wheels are deflated. I brought my pump over so some industrious person can pump up those wheels. And uh, a lot of the extraneous stuff will have to come in here to the uh, sanctuary first. Young people can handle that. But you guys are going visiting today, aren't you? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, and that's our other announcement at uh, 10.30 over at Trinity. Uh, those who are interested in going and visiting with our uh, homebound members, uh, they'll meet at 10.30, have a devotional, break up into groups, go out and do the visits, and then come back and share their experiences. Friday is the salad bar, so don't forget to uh, let everybody know about it. And are we still setting up for the salad bar on Thursday night? Yep. Okay. And that's what time? Uh, six. Six? six? Okay. So if we can get the tables and chairs set up now, then that'll make it a lot easier on Thursday night to do the finishing touches and make the turkey salad. Next Sunday, the youth group is going to Haven Ministry Shelter in the afternoon. There are more announcements on the uh, insert in your bulletin. Uh, next Saturday, the uh, Presbytery is having an educational event. There's information about it on the bulletin board. If you are interested in going along, you can uh, let me know and I can sign us up or you can go online and sign up there. Trustees, uh, remember you have a meeting coming up uh, on September 27th, and that will be at 6.30, not at 7 o'clock. Our cook, annual cookout on Ritzman Ridge will be October 7th. We're going to have a couple of different people uh, sharing music, but uh, especially uh, Bethany Goshorn is going to come. She's going to be our primary performer and uh, share her music with us, so spread the word on that. Uh, both Tom and Janet are sick today, so Tom wasn't able to make it in, but he said if you uh, need wise gift cards, uh, please contact him this week. Uh, we are collecting items for the uh, bingo games at Brookline and Locust Grove. They are very appreciative of the gifts we dropped off recently. And uh, so this month we are collecting body wash and deodorant. Last week, Nancy went to the food pans, the pantry and delivered the, our donations for them. There were about 15 pounds of supplies. This month and through October, we are going to collect shampoo, dishwashing detergent, and laundry detergent. And uh, please continue to pray for the children at the uh, Mission of the Good Shepherd in Belize, Central America. That's listed there. Are there other announcements? Oh, okay. Uh, Burl is still sick, so uh, please keep her in your prayers. Any other announcements? Let us worship God. While Patty is ringing the bell and getting ready to come up, there is one more announcement. Um, we are getting ready to put together the information for the memorial signboard uh, for the people who donated money to our church sign. Uh, this is not an alphabetical order, I apologize, but uh, if you made a donation, please look over this list, check spellings, check the way it's listed. If there's any changes you want, please uh, let us know.
How do you play in the boat? Dance. Oh, Patty, can't you do everything? Maybe, but it'll be a stretch. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. Let's continue with our call to worship. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. They are ever giving liberally and lending, and their children become a blessing. Let us pray. Merciful God, righteous judge of all, you sent Jesus among us to seek and to save those who are lost. Grant that we, like Zacchaeus of Jericho, may eagerly seek the Savior, joyfully welcome him into our homes and lives, and gladly do what is pleasing in his sight. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's share God's peace with one another. by the Spirit and through belief in truth, so that you may attain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the goodness and mercy of God, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us respond with an affirmation of faith using the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand as we sing the glory of life. Because he too is a son of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Lord always blesses the reading and hearing of his holy word. I invite our young people to come up for this time together. You gonna join us, Josh? No! <laughs> but this can be fun. Have you guys ever sung the song Zacchaeus was a wee little man? Yeah. <coughs> That's right. If they have not sung it yet, then they have been they have missed out on a vital Sunday school song that they need to know and pass on to the next generation. Okay? So there's this song. It's about this the Bible story I just read. You go, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. So you got that? Uh, he climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Okay, you ready? It's, it's very sing-songy. It's very easy. You guys can do this. Ready? Josh, come up here and show them how it's done. Yeah. No? All right, here we go, guys. Ready? And the congregation can join us, because you guys know this too, right? You, gotta have, you have to have these Sunday school songs buried in your brain, so in the future you might need them. You never know. Ready? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Do you think we should sing it again to make sure you guys got it? No? <laughs> well, thank you very much for helping me out there. Okay, so why um, was Zacchaeus having a hard time seeing Jesus? Song. He's a wee little man. That's right. So there's crowds all on the road looking, wanting to see Jesus, and he's short and he can't see past the crowds. So what did he do? He 
climbed up in the tree so he'd see, be able to see Jesus. There's all sorts of things in our lives that we think might keep us from being able to see or to be with Jesus. Um, for, for kids, sometimes that's the fact that you are kids. Uh, maybe the adults don't take you seriously. Sorry. Don't take you seriously. Um, and you feel like you're sort of left out of it all. Uh, and you want to be able to do things in the church, you want to be able to do things for Jesus, but it feels like you don't have an opportunity. But today, you guys do have an opportunity, don't you? You guys are going to uh, go on visits and to um, help uh, some of our older members uh, feel the presence of uh, God and to, to feel God's love. And that's an important thing. So Jesus has found a way to get past all those things that we feel like keep us away from God, whether it's being Jesus or being, being uh, small or not being taken seriously by anybody else. Is there anything else you can think of that makes you feel like uh, you're not able to, to come to Jesus or to, to be a part of the life of the church? Okay. We'll be thinking about that. If you ever have one of those experiences, you don't have to climb a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Uh, know that Jesus is going to come to you. Jesus will find you, and Jesus will connect with you. Uh, just like Jesus came and found Zacchaeus and said, I'm going to go and visit with you today. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and for your promise that you will always find me and hold me close to you. Help me live for you each day. Amen. All right, thanks for our time together. Do you guys want the uh, activity sheets? Sure. together and singing hymn 479, In Christ There Is No East or West. They would have a box in the back that was uh, for the alms for the poor. 
And when you wanted to give money to uh, help the church help the poor, you would put it in that box as you were leaving church. And the other was, instead of passing the offering plates to collect money to pay the bills, they would charge a pew tax. Every family essentially was taxed on the pew that they would sit in. And they would collect those pew taxes, and they would use those to pay the bills for the church. Uh, so just as Zacchaeus was a tax collector, Presbyterians were tax collectors at the beginning. Uh, and the finally was this uh, thing about Zacchaeus climbing up in a tree to see Jesus. Um, and that's kind of like going up into the balcony. And in my experience, Presbyterians really love sitting in the back. It doesn't matter how many open pews are near the front, they will always find a way to sit in the back and perhaps even up in the balcony if they can. So, you know, Zach, I think because of those three things, Zacchaeus was uh, very much a Presbyterian. Um, but I think there's, as I was looking at the story, I think there's a fourth thing that uh, makes a connection between Zacchaeus and Presbyterians. We have been uh, looking at Philip Keller's book, uh, Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, and uh, throughout the book, Philip Keller has talked about how much, how much care sheep need. If they are left to just graze wherever they want, they will graze in the same place over and over again until they have totally destroyed the grass and, it be, and the land becomes barren. Um, if they are left to their own ways, they will go to any old water source and drink any sort of... Uh, disgusting water rather than go to clean, fresh water that's good for them. Uh, we talked about how uh, they're constantly bothered by bugs and they need that uh, oil anointing them to help keep those bugs away. They love to uh, bang heads with one another and uh, they need that oil to uh, keep the conflict down in their, uh, where they are. Uh, they're constantly in need of care. And it would make you think that, uh, you know, except for the wool, what's the point in keeping sheep? But then in this chapter on surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, he says the shepherd or promises, the good shepherd promises, that he will always care for the sheep. He will always provide that good land management. He will always provide that anointing oil. Uh, he will always lead them to, to clean water. He will always protect them from their foes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow those sheep because of the good shepherd. But in return, the sheep actually can be beneficial to the land that they graze on. Uh, Philip Keller makes, up, makes the point that uh, sheep manure is one of the best types of manure for fertilizing uh, crops. And if uh, people collect it and properly spread it on their fields, it is uh, great for providing the nutrients that the ground needs. Uh, in that same respect, he points out that the lowlands have uh, good grazing land. The higher in elevation you get, the more barren it gets. But sheep like to sleep up on those higher places, and of course they are also doing their bathroom business up there, and spreading the fertilizer up to these higher regions and helping them to become more uh, green and lush. And on top of that, sheep will eat just about any plant. And while the shepherd has to keep his eye out to make sure that they are not eating poisonous plants, on the plus side, they will eat all the weeds, all the way down to the roots, that are in a, in a field, and will actually end up clearing the fields of uh, noxious weeds so that the good green grasses can grow. And so ultimately, if the good shepherd cares for the sheep and manages them properly, the sheep in their, uh, in return, will provide green, fertile uh, grasslands, beautiful parklands for, um, their, for the sheep, for the uh, environment, for other people to enjoy. So sheep can be a blessing because as the good shepherd's goodness and mercy follows those sheep and cares for those sheep, then they turn around and they spread it to the environment around them. Now, I'm not going to make any direct connections between sheep and people, but Philip Keller also points out the fact that our Good Shepherd, God, 
has promised that his goodness and his mercy shall follow us. Uh, we are like those sheep. We can be troublesome. We have this bad habit of following in habits, even though we know they're bad for us, and continuing to do the same thing over and over again, unless our good shepherd directs us in the right path. Uh, we are pestered by major life problems and little annoyances, and they can drive us nuts. But when we trust in uh, our good shepherd to be with us, he will help us through the big problems, and he will help protect us from the small problems, and he will give us peace and rest in our lives. As a good shepherd, he has provided his word to feed us in guiding us in how we are to live our lives and to remember his constant presence. And as he has anointed us with the oil of his Holy Spirit that provides that sense of presence, that guidance in our lives, that uh, helps to calm our spirits so that we can live at peace with one another. God, our good shepherd, follows us with goodness and mercy all of our lives, and he promises to always be there. And, just as the sheep can turn around and be beneficial to the environment around them, when we experience God's good, goodness and mercy in our lives, then we can be a blessing to those around us whether it's our community, whether it's our family, whether it's our workplace, or our world. And we see that in the story of Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus uh, is looking to see Jesus. And all he wants to do is see Jesus. He wants to know what Jesus is all about. But Jesus goes further. He goes to Zacchaeus. And he says, I want you to come down, and I want to spend the day at your house. Now, Zacchaeus is considered by the community a sinner. It's not because he breaks the law here and there. It's because he conspires with the Romans to collect taxes from the Jews. And he is considered very wealthy, which means he has been uh, overtaxing his fellow Jews in order to get rich himself. He is a traitor to the Jewish people. And nobody else wants to have anything to do with him. But Jesus says, I have come to find people just like you. And in that action of saying, come down, I want to come and stay at your place. I want to spend time with you. I want to be present with you. Zacchaeus experiences God's goodness and mercy in his life. And immediately he responds to that. He talks about how he is going to give of his wealth to the poor in the community. And how he's, if he has defrauded anybody, he's going to pay him back four times. Both kindness and justice become a part of his uh, very being. And already he begins to be a blessing to the community around him. And this is an important thing uh, for Presbyterians. And this is that fourth point where I think we connect with Zacchaeus as Presbyterians. From the very beginning, John Calvin, when he... Uh, defined the Reformed faith of which the Presbyterian Church is a part, um, he made it very clear that salvation is not just about knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we are God's child, knowing that one day we will go to heaven. For John Calvin, um, salvation is about experiencing the kingdom of God in our lives here and now. It's not just something we are waiting for to have to arrive one day. It's something that we should start to feel right now. And so he was very strong. And the Presbyterian Church has carried on that tradition of being very strong in caring for the poor, in working for social justice, in sharing the kingdom of God with others. We do not believe that we can make the kingdom of God come here on earth. That's God's work through the return of Jesus Christ. But by the way we speak, by the way we act, by the way we think, we can begin to live that kingdom life right now. But more importantly, other people can feel what it's like to live in the kingdom of God. They can feel God's goodness and God's mercy in their lives. Because we live our lives day by day as if we are already in 
important to the Presbyterian Church from the very beginning, and it's something we, we need to continue to do in our lives each and every day. We have that promise. A good shepherd will sh um, show his goodness and mercy to us our whole lives long. Now, we need to start living that way so that other people will benefit from it too. Um, the other... Oh, I heard that. Um... Now the thing is, uh, we tend to connect. Um, we tend to connect social justice and caring for other people as giving money to problems. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? Uh, it's a it's a transformation in our in the very nature of our personality, of our lives, of the way we just interact with people day after day. In Galatians chapter five, the Apostle Paul talking about two different natures. There's the nature of the flesh, that's our selfish nature. And then there's the nature of the spirit, that's God's uh, nature. And he says, when we live selfishly, when we live for the flesh, all these different things happen. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, uh, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries. And when you look at all of that together, that sounds like a pretty horrible life. And if that's going on in an entire community, that's a pretty horrible community. When we are left to ourselves, when we are left to our own selfish desires, that's the kind of world we live in. But then he says, when we allow God's Holy Spirit to work in our lives, it will cultivate fruit. Love, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, joy, and goodness. Now think of those things. If the Holy Spirit is creating that fruit in our lives, and doing that on a day-to-day -day basis, and each one of us here begins to live our lives that way, what a different world we will live in. Just by the change in our attitude change in the way we speak and think about other people, the way we act towards one another. We create a blessed world to live in. And uh, the other day, we were Angela and I were watching Paddington Bear, and I, I kind of saw an example of that in Paddington. Um, I don't know if you know the, the story about Paddington Bear, but he is a bear uh, who grew up um, and with a, a uh, aunt and uncle, and then uh, moved to England. And uh, he's living in England with the Brown family. And in the second movie, it starts out with him narrating a letter to his aunt, explaining what uh, London is all about his life, and about his day-to-day -day life. But the people in the community don't realize what an impact Paddington has been having on their lives until he's arrested for a crime he didn't commit, has to break out of jail so that he can stop the bad guy who did commit the crime. Just a minute, young bear. I told you to wash the angel years. Oh, but I did, Mrs. Bird. I, I wonder how that got in there. I really feel at home in Windsor Gardens. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Good morning, Paddington. Oh, you breakfast. Thank you. Your sandwich is always good. Why he makes friends wherever he goes. 
That is why Windsor Gardens is a happier place whenever he's around. He wouldn't hesitate if any of us needed help. So stand aside, Mr. Curry, because we're coming through. Paddington Bear had a uh, positive effect on his community just by being himself, focusing on good manners, uh, focusing on kindness of others, looking for the goodness in others. And he, had, he transformed that community he lived in. And that is what God is calling us to do. God has promised his goodness and his mercy will follow us and will be with us all of our lives. But it's not something for us to hold on just for ourselves. It should transform our thoughts, our words, our actions, and through us, transform our communities so that others will say that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward as we present to God his tithes and our offerings.
stuff out and putting up tables and chairs. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forever. Amen.